Hi again. My name is Rebel and I'm the Rebel Reseller. And this is take two because y'all know Robert's forever pointing out my errors while well, he forgot to turn the mic on. So I recorded the entire video already with no audio. So get him on Wednesday, those of you who come into the live. Get him. All right. Today I'm going to be doing my Watts Sold for last week, Monday through Thursday, May 23rd through the 26th. I think I have sales on all the platforms except Mercari. So, y'all, I'm really trying to get this month. I said it last month. Last month was uh, a difficult month for us. And I just had a whole lot of distractions. Robert said it was okay for me to go ahead and share kind of what we went through last month. It was a it was a tough month for us. And we weren't ready to share until now. But Robert had a regular doctor's appointment last at the beginning of last month. And his doctor wanted to do some follow-up testing. So he had an ultrasound done. And the test results came back that he probably assume. assumed, we had to assume that he had testicular cancer. So we did tests, lots of tests. Everything kept coming back that things were good, you know, that everything was okay. But he opted to go ahead and have surgery which was the Wednesday that we were supposed to do the live. And believe me, it was so hard Tuesday night to do the nurse flipper, knowing the next morning we had to get up at five in the morning and be at the hospital for surgery. But we found out this week that it was not cancer. So we're overjoyed, very happy. We weren't sharing with a whole lot of people because we didn't want to um, worry his parents, and that until we knew for sure what we were facing. So, you know, it was, it was, it was hard. I found myself distracted a lot. We, we had a whole lot of talks about just life. So now I'm ready. You know, this is behind us. He's on the mend. Um, and so now we can move forward. And so... Hopefully, I'll get back into it this month, but it was a tough month trying to just trying to not think too much about the what ifs. All right, so back to my what sold. And I just didn't get my goals that I usually set for myself, my internal goals. I don't have anything in writing or anything, but... Um, I didn't meet a whole lot of my goals for last month. I just, I got what, I got done what I could get done. But I really need to get back focusing on cross-listing because I'm, you know, I think that's going to fill in the gap for us financially when we have our ebbs and flows on eBay. And Robert, Robert keeps reminding me, though, that, you know, I seem to get down, of course, we all do, when my sales are very low but then it turns right around and I have a tremendous day so and I think I need to focus on getting more stuff listed and getting more stuff cross-listed so I'm the other night I think I cross-listed um, 30 I think 36 to Mercari and Poshmark I'm trying to get as many items cross-listed to at least one other platform as I possibly can without duplicating too many. Poshmark, I'm trying to keep some of my heavier items because the shipping tends to be better there for the heavier items. Um, and then Mercari, I'm putting a lot of my, um, my bread and butter stuff on there. So let's just see if that works. You know, this is something that's just going to be ongoing for the rest of the year, and I'm hoping all of this effort will pan out for fourth quarter for me. Now, as far as clothing, I am going to show two, th two clothing items that sold on eBay. Somebody had made a comment that they wanted to start seeing more 
of my clothing items. So I'll pick a few, but it's mostly we sell at this point um, a lot of jeans. So the, there's not much to say about them, but I did have a really good sell as far as I think for jeans. So I'll share that. I sold five things during that four day period, five clothing items on eBay and three on Posh. I think that's it. I think that's my goal this month. I'm going to try to get a lot, a lot listed. I'm not going to put a number on it because then, you you know, you set yourself up to, to be disappointed if things just don't happen. Um, but I also, I want to start getting into my Goodwill bins bags. I haven't touched them probably in over a month. I've only done two of the bags. So I think I'm going to start bringing some of them over and then mingle it co-mingling it in with some of the yard sale stuff that we're picking up in estate sale stuff this weekend was a uh, okay but y'all the price of gas i'm gonna have to start really rethinking doing as much sourcing as we have been especially since i do have a lot i think we need to maybe not around here we can source we usually go out wednesday night to one particular estate sale company thursday morning we spend almost all day Friday, and then I spend quite a long time on Saturdays sourcing. And so that's a lot of gas. And then on Saturdays, Robert goes in one direction, and then I go with my sister in another direction. So I've got two vehicles sourcing on those days. So it's crazy. All right, let's get to this. All right, Mattel, first item, Mattel Jurassic World Stegosaurus plush. I pick up all Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, whether it's the figures, the plush, anything. Some of it's bread and butter. A lot of times the figures do go for more, especially if it's some of the, the action type figures. Um, but this little 7-inch plush sold for $9.25. I'm pretty sure it was a Ben's pickup, so I have pennies in it. This is a Russ, Mr., no, Ms., who was the name on the tag, Owl Plush. It is filled with the nutshells. I try to always make a point to put that just in case there's an allergy issue. This is from 1978, and it sold for best offer of $8. This is an Eden Rabbit Plush. I couldn't find anything like it, um, but it. I had to wash it a couple of times. It had some significant staining, and I did not get all of it out, um, so I did note that there was wear and stains and fuzz balls but I went ahead and listed it because you know I just couldn't find anything like it and it did sell for $18.55 this is Dakin Dog Plush I think I showed this recently in a, a haul I believe it's supposed to have a pacifier um, with it but it was um, it had already been torn off it sold for, and very quickly, for best offer of $18. I'm taking a lot of offers right now because I want to get that, you know, that, that sell-through rate going for me. Sending out tons of offers, probably anywhere from 50 to over 100 a day. Um, just trying to get activity, get the algorithm to smile on me a little. This is Play School My First Soft baby doll. This is the satin version. Now there is a snuzzles version also that I think is sells for more. This one's from 1995. It too did have a lot of discoloration that did not come out in the wash. Um, just made a note of it, took pictures, and it sold for best offer of $20. I'll try to, the snuzzles by Play School are, I've talked about it before. I'll try to put a few more up here. Definitely familiarize yourself with just the, the fabric that they're made of and the patterns because once you've seen it, you'll know it and you'll be able to look for it like in piles of plush um, because they are definitely big bolos. This is a Dandy Imports Little Brown Dog. It sold for full price, um, which means I haven't written this. This has been listed before, prior. And I did an end and sell similar. And before my sale could even set in, it sold at full price. So I'm really seeing a big difference again when I end and do sell similar. Now I know, I think it was Rhonda, 
um, who said that she just goes in and um, tweaks prices and stuff and she seems to see a, a difference in her um, sales by just doing that. Um, it just, at this point, I'm just going to keep doing the sell, the ending and sell similar. It's just tedious when you have as many items as I do. Um, it, it, instead of me doing cross listing, which is what I really need to be doing, I do have to spend, you know, a certain amount of time each evening just trying to stay ahead and keep ending the ones that are about to end at the end of the month because I'm at, I'm getting to that point with 9,000 listings where, um, it, pretty soon I'm going to probably have to upgrade because I'll start paying more fees um, at the level that I'm at. So I may I may just go ahead and upgrade, upgrade to an anchor store in the next few months as my numbers get bigger. And that, that's been my goal this whole year is to get back to that level. But this did sell for $19.95. This is a Gund VeggieTales Junior Asparagus Plush. He's from 1998. I pick up all things Veggie Tales. Um, a lot of the plush is either Gund or Fisher Price. Um, the big one to remember to look for is the Madame Blueberry, but familiarize yourself with a lot of the characters if you've if you aren't already, because even most of them are bread and butter. But I pay you know a quarter at a yard sale or at the bins. They're not very heavy, so they're going to be relatively cheap also there and you know like this one sold for nine dollars and 25 cents Robert picked this up at an estate sale um, it was on the half price day so we paid five dollars for it it is a Francoma Willard Stone Indian Maiden brown I should have said figure it ain't there 12 inch um, I remember the crazy lamp lady talking about Francoma so I knew it was something good when he found it and brought it to me so um, I did end up taking a best offer for it of $42, but it, it sold within a couple of days of listing it. This is one of the pairs of jeans we sold. This is Rocky Mountain Clothing. It is, I'm pretty sure these are vintage jeans. They sold for best offer of $50. These are the great courses. Um, they are a DVD series. Um, there's on all kinds of subject. This particular one was world history. I think they're mostly directed at like the college level. Um, but I picked up a bunch. What, how I learned about these is I found a bunch of them at the Goodwill bins one time and I went ahead and just bought them all. And some of them sold for quite well, like 40 and $50 for the sets. Um, and then I found these, this particular set at an estate sale. I think I paid a dollar a DVD so I probably had four dollars in this because I paid for the book also um, and it sold for twenty six dollars and ninety two cents this is JJ the jet plane it is one of the wooden um, vehicles this is old Oscar it sold for best offer of eight dollars sorry I have a little cheat sheet cheat board over here. Robert said he's going to get me an app so that I can start putting stuff on the screen and not have this distraction where I'm always trying to make sure what the screen says and what it actually sold for is the same. This is Capelli Beaded Rattan Straw Handbag Purse. I picked this up at an estate sale. I want to say I paid one dollar for it. I sent out a bunch of offers for um, $12, um, but it ended up selling at my sale price of $13.90. Now this brand was by Relpo. And when I did comps on eBay, the only thing I was seeing was like a single snowman vase. So I decided since I had this double that, you know, I just kind of picked a price that I thought was reasonable based on what the, the singles were selling for. And it sold pretty much, I think, the same day I listed it for $29.95. So definitely keep your eyes out for this Relpo. I don't think you can really see it on this tag. But another brand for me to look out for. And they're just, they look like basic Christmas um, ceramic dishes that we see at all estate sales and yard sales. 
This is Aurora. I love Aurora. It was a cute little brown raccoon, 12 inches from 2017. He sold for $9.25. This is another one of the Monet trinket boxes. This one was an elephant. I bought seven of them at an estate sale, paid $5 each. I've already sold one of them. I can't remember for how much. Um, this is the second one and it sold for best offer of $20.50. These are Hush Puppies. Um, I picked these up in my online estate sale that I purchased through Hybid last year. I really need to get back into starting to watch for them again in our local area. There's been some amazing ones that just, I couldn't do the pickup, so I didn't bid on them. But I think if you're having problems looking for inventory, and I mean, I don't live in a large area. I will have to travel a little bit, probably to Knoxville um, is where I'm seeing a lot of these online estate sales are going through. Um, but, you know, definitely check into it. And we even learned, we were playing around with it and was figuring out, you know, picking categories like for me, toys, and then looking in the estate sales, the, the auctions that had toys in them. These sold for $18.55. This is Sparky Fire Dalmatian Dog. It is by BJ Toy Company. Probably, I put it in my like toy factory level quality. Um, but I do pick them up. They're usually bread and butter. And there's usually cute characters like I know to pick up Dalmatians and Rottweilers and especially a lot of the dogs and the characters. Um, and this one sold relatively quickly for $9.25. This is a Harry Potter Hedwig Owl plush clip-on. Little, three and a half inch. It sold for best offer of $8. Again, that's probably something I picked up at the bin, so pennies in it. This was a brand I hadn't seen before. It is Gasoline Jeans. Um, and they sold for best offer of $26. So definitely, we get a lot of vintage jeans in this area. So it's just something I think we're going to really focus more on. Of course, I like to find the Patagonias and, and some of the other higher end items. But I sell a lot of jeans. And that is really helping fill in the gaps between Poshmark and eBay. Um, with the clothing sales. This I picked up at the same estate sale that I bought all of those Monet trinket boxes. I spent, I think the first day was like a hundred dollars and the second day was like a hundred sixty dollars and that was half price. Bought a ton of stuff. I think most of it's been listed but I'm not sure. This was a Corolle Catherine Refabert doll. I am pretty sure it was a little boy um, he didn't look like he'd been played with. He still had the netting and everything on his hair. Um, but the box definitely had issues. And it sold for $46.45. This is a Walmart brown dog plush. Cute little blue glitter eyes. Just kind of looks like a plain plush. I'm pretty sure I picked it up at um, an estate sale. Because I have two of them. Maybe the bins. Um, but the first one sold for $9.25, and right now my store is on a larger sell. So the, price, the, the last one is currently listed at $9.15. And then these I picked up at an estate sale last year. Had a whole bunch of vintage stuff. Um, I can't remember. I bought a bunch of stuff there and a bunch of unpainted ceramic stuff, I remember. Um, but this was... The sheets that go with the vintage Light Bright. Um, this pack was for Wuzzles, and there were a few sheets of Wuzzles, but there were also My Little Ponies in there, and then a bunch of refills. So it's like they took all of their unused ones and stuffed it into a single um, cardboard container there. This was another one of them that I had ended and sell, did a sale similar, and within a few days, um, it sold. It sold for $27.85. 
And then this last one. This is Gund. Gund. I did it. Gund Head and Tails Pink Rabbit Plush. I had a high price on it because I couldn't find any like it when I originally listed it. I did get a message from somebody who said, you know, I really like this. Is there any way you would take $25? And I went ahead and accepted it. You know, sometimes it's nice to try to go really high, but after a while, you, you need to start, you know, considering offers that are being sent to you. And $25 for this one, I probably paid a dollar or two um, for it is still really good. So um, she's happy. And, you know, I've got, it was huge, 23 inches. So it was taking up a whole lot of real estate out there in my storage area. So that's good. And then this is a my one and only Bonanza sale. And I've not had any since. But I received a message from somebody. I think I had it listed for like $34 on Bonanza. And she sent me a message asking if I would take $30. So I went ahead and changed the price. Quick sell. This is Commonwealth Maisie Mouse 12 inch plush. Uh, definitely, most things Maisie Mouse are bolos at this point. So definitely check, you know, check the comps for them. And then these next few are my Facebook orders. This was a Monchi Chi figure lot. Pretty sure I got these in the bottom of a bins at the the good at Goodwill. These are the types of things I love digging for um, and then just getting tons of little stuff like this. These sold for $6 on Facebook for just too little. This is a Family Christian Stores Lovey Bear Rattle Plush. It sold for $8 on Facebook. This is, I picked this up, I think Robert did last year at an estate sale. I want to say we paid three or four dollars for it. It's an Aladdin pump a drink gallon jug in blue with its original box and it sold for $23 on Facebook. And then these, I want to say these were Hardee's or I don't know. But I find these quite often and I pick them up and I make small lots with them. This is Fraggle Rock, which I just noticed I didn't have a space there. Um, this is Red Radish and then the Eggplant Car. They're from the 1980s. These two sold for $7. This was my other Poshmark sale. I sold three clothing items and then this Nature Company Mountain Lion Plush. It sold for $32 on Poshmark. And then I had three Mercari sales. This is an applause. I think I said in the beginning I didn't have Mercari. It's Etsy I didn't have. Huh. Messed it up. All right. This is applause. Happy birthday, Donald Duck plush. I actually have three of these that I picked up. I bought a bundle of, of vintage Mickey Mouse stuff at a, an estate sale and didn't I don't remember per piece how much I ended up paying for everything this sold on um, Mercari for six dollars this was a white lamb plush no tag I had everything going against it as far as you know I don't know who the manufacturer is you know it's just kind of a basic Lamb plush with the cute little ears. Still sold it for $18. So definitely watch and check stuff like this. You know, it's hard when you don't have a manufacturer, but I've just learned over the years, there's just certain plush when you look at them, you know they're vintage and you can put a, a, a little bit more sometimes than my bread and butter as far as the price. And then this last one was um, a cloth book called Friends Forever by Susie Zoos, um, and it sold for $9. So I think I've got a lot of work this week. I'm not going to set any goals on here because if it doesn't work out, then I might feel, you know, bad about it. But I have tons of stuff. Robert and I are going to try to get at probably four haul videos done. Um... We went out this weekend and we forgot the camera. Sorry. Um, but 
you know it's some people like the live yard selling and then others are just content with still just watching me bombard you with all of the stuff that we're picking up um, so I've got some amazing stuff but it's a mountain right now and I need to get it sorted and I need to get videos done it on, on it because I need to get it listed so we can get it sold right that's the goal get it sold all right I think that's it I hope you guys had amazing sourcing this weekend and now you're ready to you know get to the what we all do the listing the cleaning all of the stuff that just goes into this job I don't think people realize how much work it is to do what we do but I love it 23 years at it I love it all right bye